Hey guys, um, what I want to focus on first is something that's uh, pretty common to, to most, if not all of you. Um, most of you have a, a rather delimited sort of bridge, and um, what I would want you to focus on is not so much the, the, um, the entire extents of your bridge, but simplify it. So if perhaps um, your bridge is just, let me just do a quick, um, like a rectangle here, something like that. Um, we can just take information from that directly off of that curve, right? Like you could, you could just very simply just build a surface for your for your walkable surface. Most of them are going to be curved, but that part's not the critical part. The part that is critical is how do you actually create an arc and then close that volume so that you can you can sort of delimit where the edge of your bridge is. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to do, and this applies to a lot of different steps that a lot of you are doing. Deconstruct, well, I've already constructed geometry. Then you deconstruct the geometry and break it down into little bits and pieces. Then you reconstruct it into something else, right? You're starting to get the hang of that because every single one of you has had to do it on your bridge already. So anyway, um, I can deconstruct this. And then I just need to grab one edge. So I'll go to set list and list item. Slider zero to three, because there are four items um, on my edges. And I actually grab the one that I want for the, the first item. So let me um, hide that. And this is what you see. The, I grabbed that edge. OK, from that edge, I can use that to create the arc. So I'll just go to um, Curve Division, plug that in, and change the value to be um, a simple two subdivisions, which will give me three points. And that's how I get that center point, um, middle point. OK, so, so from that, you can just bump that geometry up and start to construct with it. But um, <clears throat> the thing that I think a lot of us are getting hung up on is is when whenever your geometry is not quite that simple meaning the edge of your bridge and let me just real quickly reconstruct this i'm going to go um do euclidean we'll go in the z direction zero to 25 ish something like that and i'm going to grab my second point, that's that guy, I'll move him up like that, so 25 is way too huge, or no, that's going zero, that's why, there we go, all right, so 25, um, let's do, I need to grab each other point, of course, so that can be zero, this can be two, and then I'll just draw a new curve, and uh, we'll do a arc three point and I'll go from zero to the new one to two like that okay so that completes that thought that I was talking about but what happens when your geometry is a little bit longer than that right um, so I'm gonna scale 1d I'll go from that midpoint to the end and I'll just extend this actually I need to make a copy of it first right back in there grab one of those I think it would be that one scale 1d and I'm gonna pull that out there okay so my bridge surface is a little bit longer okay um, that is something that I would need to manage using and I told a bunch of you what it was do any of you remember what it was construct domain squared Okay, that's going to allow you to, to grab certain information that you wouldn't otherwise have. So um, <clears throat> all the way back at the original surface, that's this one, um, something like that. Um, <clears throat> if I was to, uh, let's see, go to domain, construct domain squared, and I'm going to use surface, and I'm going to use um, isotrim, okay? I will um, plug my surface in, and I'm going to plug my um, domain in. And this 
is the part where it depends a little bit on how you want to construct it. If you're going to use the actual dimension, then you don't want to reparametrize this. But I'm just trying to get it pretty close, enough to get a schematic model out. So I'm going to reparametrize it and just do it by eye. So you right click on surface, reparametrize that. That's the wrong surface actually. Sorry. Let me copy that and reference the other surface. There you go. New one, that one. Um, so we need those sliders, 0 to 1.00. By now, you should all be getting familiar with this. The concepts that I'm introducing should be something that you feel like you've seen before. So I'll plug all these in, and I'll, um, well, I'll leave that where it is for now, but I'll pull that all the way. So the, the V direction is, is the width of the actual walkable surface. That's going to be 100%. But the U min and U max is where I would want to maybe pull it back a little bit. So I can um, zoom in on this and get it close to where I need it. Looks like I'm going to need another index. So bump it up there. And I'll make this um, 0.0865. make that um, six seven close enough okay so that's how you kind of calibrate that if you're gonna do it by eye there are a bunch of ways that you can do something like that but I'm not trying to be perfect in this model I just want to get the idea out. so that's how I isolate that particular bridge component but at the same time I need to continue the structure so if if this arc is actually going to continue down then I need to take points off of this edge and continue those down <coughs> down to meet that arc and again, it won't be totally perfect. In fact, most structure that's under a bridge doesn't follow exactly the geometry that's above it. But um, so uh, let me clean this up a little bit and pull these out. The, the beauty of this whole thing is that now I have another surface that I want to do pretty much the same thing to. So I can take. Um, everything from the deconstruct brep over and I can just copy that whole system. So I'm going to copy this, move it down, plug this in, and you'll see that it kind of replicates that same sort of system. But instead of going up with the middle one, I actually want to go down. So I just change these values. Um, the Z direction, rather than going up, I'm going to move this um, down. So I'll switch this to a negative. But I also want to do the same thing for um, index number two. That's going to be that one right there. So I'll um, copy the system again and pull it up a little bit. But I'll plug in my other index instead. And then I'll plug that one back in to, whoops, wrong spot, that spot. OK, so here's what's going to happen. Rather than, um, rather than leaving it in this arc like this, I just need to get it to go back to a position that's going to blend well with the structure. Okay, and again, mathematically, this isn't perfect. I'm doing this by eye. You know, but it'll serve the purpose of extending that structure down a little bit. And in fact, I can kind of keep going to accentuate it. I can de-accentuate the arc. I could have it reverse the arc if I really wanted to. Like I could pull it up like that and then pull this thing back to the point where it is going to, you know, sort of spur out at the end. All those things are design decisions that you'll be responsible for at some point in your career. Um, but anyway, that's how you would start to isolate that particular system. And what's cool about that is for those of you who are doing bridges like, say, um, who has a bridge that has a, a reverse system like that that goes underneath? Yeah. What's it called, your bridge? Do you know what it's called? No? OK. Let me see if I can find one real fast. Really, really, really fast. Darn. I could not find one fast enough. No. Infinity Bridge?
trying to see the structure underneath. Well, this guy. Well, that's a different kind of structure. But anyway, um, what I was going to refer to here is that since we have um, an arc that has three points, and since we have three points on the original surface, if we're going to do a vertical structure for that, it's as simple as combining the two. So um, we have a moved point, we have a moved point, and then we have the original point. So all I need to do from that point in order to build that vertical structure is to just um, go to curve, use line, and I'm going to go from the end point to the end point, just like that. So I'm going to go from this end point to that end point. Then I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go from this end point to this end point. Okay? So can you guys understand conceptually why construct domain really is the key for how you start to do these complex systems above and below your walkable surface? Yeah, no, maybe, yeah, kind of, yeah, well, anyway, um, I think that's really powerful because at that point, all you need to do is just use your pipe command, and I'm going to do this really simply, but um, you just start plugging in all your curves pretty much. You can plug in this curve, you can plug in the arc curve, you can plug in your top arc, and that whole system is going to become, um, is going to become your structure. Okay. I mean, that's like super mega simplified compared to what you guys are doing, but it's the same essence as what you're doing. You know? So for a 10-minute lesson, I think that kind of shows you something that's a special tool. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Um, any questions? Before I kind of pause, let you guys sink your teeth into this one, and then I'll kind of give you another tip or two. Are you going to save it? Yeah, I'll save this for you.